Welcome to Small Umbrella in the Rain, podcast on all things little woman and Louisa May Alcott. I am Nina, your host. The last collaboration that me and Emily did together about Laurie and his character arc got really good feedback from you guys, so thank you. It's wonderful and encourages us to do more. Emily and I got together again to make another episode on Friedrich and his and Joe's relationship. Now Joe and Fritz, they were the OTP of the nine-year-old me. That's fandom lingo for one true pairing. I could make a thousand hours lecture series on their book dynamics alone. This is going to be the first part of our Friedrich discussions. Hello, my name is Emily. This is my channel Emiloid and I mostly talk about books on here. I do a few video essays. And uh, Nina, how about you talk about yourself? I do gender studies on Little Woman. I've been focusing lately on Laurie and Frick Bear. All right. Mm. Nina and I found each other. I had actually found her uh, blog post about Professor Bear uh, when I was preparing to make my long and very critical review of the new 2019 Little Woman adaptation. And she reached out to me and I realized I had read her work before. And uh, we decided to do this collaboration because we love talking about little women and having long discussions mm. about the adaptations of the book and today we're talking about professor bear and joe and i actually found emily because one of my friends on louisa may alcott group in facebook told me that i should watch her video <laughs> oh yeah yeah thank you kimberly for the, all of this I, i'm so flattered that people like you took initiative to share mm. the video I was so psyched when, when you reached out because oh, I was like, oh, I I remember thinking like, oh, would this person agree with my views? Because I loved your post on Professor Bear mm. preparing all of the uh, Fritzes and um, and the actors. You really reached out to me, Professor Bear. He he is kind of a topic of contention in the Little Women fan base. Uh, he he kind of has been seen by a lot of people as someone who was shoehorned in at the last minute because Louisa May Alcott. She was forced by her publisher to uh, marry Joe off to somebody because that's what she needed to get her book uh, published. She wrote this yeah. random guy and then married Joe off, and then that was that. This is yeah. all propaganda, mostly shared by Joe and Laura Shippers. Yes. Yes. That is also mm. a thing because people were so upset that Joe didn't marry Laurie that. So I think that's part of where the resentment for Professor Bear comes from. And also, I think. Professor Bear is not a very is not a conventionally romantic mm. hero, right? He's this older guy who's an intellectual, and he doesn't really operate in these big romantic gestures in the way that Laurie does. And so, I think a lot of um, people who really attach to Laurie just really resented that. And if you talk to the Bear fans, mm. pretty much a different yeah. story. Yeah, mm. he is. Yeah, <laughs> he is. <laughs> Uh, like, uh, I mean, when you sent me the, uh, those blog posts about him, I'm like, yeah, I feel so validated right now. Because <laughs> Joe never, was never the type of person who would react well to romantic gestures. She hated it. She did. She was really shocked when she realized in the first part of Little Woman that there's a rumor going on that Meg and Laurie are an item. And she's yeah. really shocked by the idea that Laurie has feelings for her, romantic feelings. Like, she's really resents that whole concept of um, being in love, but she's like 15. She yeah. grows out of yeah, it. Yeah, no, they're, they're kids. Yeah, she's a late bloomer, Joe. <laughs> she, yeah, yeah, no, she doesn't quite awaken at, um, at the same yeah. time as um, everyone else. She also sees the ridiculousness in some parts of Laurie's behavior because yeah. she knows that she's not really part of that uh, mm-hmm. idea that he has. As we discussed before, Laurie doesn't really validate Joe's feelings like that, right? Because um, you know she, he he keeps saying, "Oh well, Joe, you can you can get yourself to love somebody," or like, "Well, I'll get you someday." Mm. Like you know he he says that a lot in, in the book when you know she she's not really someone who enjoys that sort of romantic chase. She, she's just a, a practical girl, and then that stuff just belongs in books. Uh, she does have this romantic side on her, of her, but she's very practical about it. In the first part of Little Woman, she's reading a book, the book from Susan Warner, White White World. Yeah. yeah, that's the name of the book. That's one of the things that I made, made me convinced that Louisa planned from the beginning that uh, Jo ends up with Fritz. And she crafted Fredrik's character specifically for Jo. In that book, the whole storyline, it's very similar to Jo and Fredrik in Little Woman. And it, I was so fascinated when I read 
like right word because it was it felt like I was reading Joseph Friedrich's story in like another dimension. It's, it's really uncanny. Okay. It's very very Christian book, many Christian moralities, but the dynamic between the leading lady and the romantic interest they are very much the same. What's the name of that book? Again? White White World by Susan Warner. It's a, an American book from 1850. It was one of the first American feminist books and I found okay. it so fascinating. Jo is reading that book in Little Woman in chapter 11 I think and she's reading okay. that in, in in a tree and she's crying because it's so moving and Jo actually reads romance novels. Yeah so she's not averse to romance. Yeah. She, she doesn't she just wants it in a certain way. She wants an equal romance. She wants someone who respects her. The White Red Bird is interesting because it's about these two people trying to find a balance in that uh, relationship. Yeah, no, it's and it's a, a value that um, Louisa May Alcott um, like, yeah. really, really espouses in all of her um, books. We, we get hints uh, early on that Jo, you know, he, she likes a certain idea of romance, mm. does not want Laurie, just not want Laurie, or how Laurie uh, ex uh, exhibits it. Like, uh, I think you would probably know more about this. So uh, why do you think Louisa May Alcott would, would later write that, like, oh, Jo should have been like a literary spinster or say something like that? She wrote it to her friend Elizabeth Powell, who was 16 years at the time. I think she was a teacher in a school where Louisa was studying with her sister. And Louisa was much older than she was. And based on what I know, Elizabeth was very against marrying. And she was 16, well, it makes sense that you don't want to marry someone when you're 16, even in the 19th yeah. century. And yeah. uh, I think Louisa specifically crafted that letter for Elizabeth. Daniel yeah. Sheely, who is an Alcott schooler, he has done some extensive research about this. It's really worth reading. Elizabeth did get married a decade later. She was like 26 when she married and it yeah. seems that her relationship was quite happy and she had two sons and she became a dean of a school. I think Louisa used Elizabeth as an inspiration for Joe's character in first part of Little Woman and in the sequels because it, okay. this actually sounds a lot like Joe's and Friedrich's relationship. So when Louisa herself was 15, she actually wrote uh, love letters to her uh, friend Emerson, who was 30 years older than she was. He was her first love, maybe her first crush. And she was very different to Joe in that sense because she was very romantic and very sentimental. And But then I have also done research on Moose's love for Henry David Thoreau, who I believe was one of the main models for Friedrich. And it's really uncanny how. Uh, Henry comes out as li in literal disguises in all of Louis's novels. I think she wrote Jo to be an idealized version of herself because when I read Little Woman last time, Jo is not really as angry as she is in the movies, or especially in the recent movies like the 2019 mm -hmm. film or in the 2017 series when she snaps out time to time. Yeah, yeah, but right. the book Jo, she's not that angry. People always say that Louis had like anger issues and such. I think in the 19th century context, whenever a woman would get angry, would have been labeled something terrible. It has a lot to do with the way we read history and the way we approach Louis's character. Jo is definitely a combination of the woman who Louis admired. Yeah, I think it's funny uh, with the um, well, with the anger issues because I think it's more about how she talks back at people. I think with with the whole incident with Amy falling in. On. I think she was just like, oh, in my anger, I almost let my, I left my sister behind and I almost let her die. It's, I think it's that sort of thing where she's kind of governed by her feelings rather than her head. And I think mm -hmm. that, um, that's more what they're, um, they're getting at. Because I think, you know, Marmy, she, she's kind of a parallel to Marmy because Marmy dealt with a lot of those uh, mm -hmm. issues when she was younger. She was always uh, trying to hold back on her emotions because, and that's how Joe's father became a good foil to her. Joe's father uh, was able to kind of calm her down. You know, and then it got, became harder again when they were poor because it's so hard for her to see her daughters be a fi a financially struggle and have to work. So these girls, they, they these other people were necessary mm. for them to grow. Yeah, that's very true. And it applies to John and Meg, it applies to Amy and Laurie, and especially to Fritz. When Louisa was um, asked by her publisher to write a book to girls about good marriage matches, Louisa's publisher actually wanted that Louisa would have married off Joe to Laurie because Laurie was 
such a popular character, but then Louis was always very adamant not doing that. In the 19th century, German immigrants, they were really discriminated in the US. So she's also including the social aspect to the book, which I didn't realize until I started to do this research. I was really blown away by the German connections in Little Woman. Pretty yeah. sure that Louisa was a hardcore Germanophile. Yeah. And, and what I, something I love about the 1984 adaptation, when she's like, oh, well, my family was trans, uh, or we're a family of transcendentalists. And then mm. Friedrich's like, yeah, well, that's all the German philosophy. Yeah. And, you know, and this is what we were getting at. You know, and and like, I love that scene so much. Oh, yeah, I, I also love and, that uh, scene. I was so angry because Greta Gerwig's version, it did include this intellectual thirst that Joe has. Also in the 1949 film, you know, Joe, she wants to study German. And it's yeah. not as good as in the 1994 film, but you can see that she has this intellectual curiosity towards Professor. You can kind of see a bit when, um, when he sort of opens her horizons a bit, you know, through mm. music. And, yeah, um, and they go to the opera and uh, yeah, everything. Yeah. And I like that in the film, Friedrich is actually singing and he's singing a song from, um, it's a song from Goethe, I think. That's a direct link to Louisa and her love for Goethe and yeah. all these uh, philosopher who's, philosophers who she was in love with. Okay. I really like that. Yeah, no, I, I love it when a film really understands mm. um, Fritz like that. If people think that and I think you've pointed out in, in your blog post, or maybe um, or maybe another blog post did, or another article, but, uh, you know, Fred, uh, Frederick Baird, he, he was not a conventional um, choice at all. Like, even the choice of marrying someone like that was considered pretty out there, because, mm. you know, he, he was a German immigrant, like you said, and he had come from uh, this position of respect to this kind of position of poverty. And for her to marry this guy who's not as well established in that country is probably discriminated mm. against and to and to make that choice i mean yeah. that that's that was not conventional that's that's not someone just knuckling down to you know to society's demands mm. that's that's just a choice that wouldn't be expected of you at the time and mm. it's also very fitting of joe because she, you know she's an unconventional woman so she married an unconventional man yeah, one of the Little Woman fans who I interviewed for my articles, she pointed out that this um, unconventionality of Frederick that Cho is really attracted to because Cho always feels very unconventional herself and that is why she yeah. doesn't fit to the circles in Concord. Cho being this female writer in a time when there weren't that many female writers, she finds this um, charismatic, eccentric professor, he doesn't really fit in, but he yeah. doesn't struggle with it the same way as Joe is struggling. She, she respects hard work. That's yeah. That's why she can't really respect Lori at that point, or, or, or be mm. with him, because Lori doesn't work long. She, Lori can't relate to how Joe works hard. He kind of resents Joe's writing in the book as well. And uh, yeah. you can see bits of that in the 1994 film, yeah. like in one sentence, but still, <laughs> at least it's included. In the book you can really see that he's uh, distracting her when she's writing, and then when Laurie's proposing to Cho, Cho is like, you are not going to like my writing. But, yeah, you never yeah. have to write again. Mm. You won't have to write again mm. in your life. Yeah, like money resource everything, but Cho wants to write. Friedrich wants her to write, like, I don't understand these people who say that Friedrich somehow prevents Cho from writing, like, yeah. he wants Cho to write, he wants Cho to be the best writer in the world, really. and he gives her Shakespeare's books so Cho can study characters, he just, he just doesn't like uh, sensational stories because he thinks that Cho has much more potential. And when people say, oh no, he made it so that she wouldn't write, and I'm like, no. In all the movies, they don't include that chapter at the beginning of Little Woman Part 2 when Cho is actually starting to write those sensational stories. From the beginning, she, she knows that it's really bad writing. Mm -hmm. She does it for the money and she tries to justify it for herself. But mm -hmm. she doesn't feel content by that. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I think... Yeah, because... People criticized Friedrich for being elitist and, you know, criticizing mm. her for writing genre fiction. And I'm just like, well, the whole point, like, Louisa, like, even phrases it such that it's not good for Joe yeah. to write like that. It puts her in a bad state of mind. 
mm. when she is churning out sensationalist stories just for the money because it's not authentic to her. And Friedrich, you know, he, he doesn't really directly like make her do anything. She um, like he, he left it up to her. Like he, he never made yeah. her do anything. Yeah, Albert Schuller and Nacini wrote it very well, I think, when she said that uh, when Louisa was younger, in her 20s, she wrote those um, potboiler stories, but Louisa didn't have anyone to guide her. And you can see that in Little Woman, that she wants that there's someone who actually looks at her work, takes it more seriously and gives her some advice on what to do. And she did it in secret. Later in life, Louisa didn't want to have anything to do with those those stories. Mm -hmm. Now, I have yeah. read some of them and I like some of them. Some of those stories are not that great. <laughs> so, uh, she was practicing her writing. That's okay. But then yeah. she's also aware that she's not doing the best of work and then she's really ashamed to show them to anyone. Mm. She, she didn't want to be limited to them. Yeah. It's really impressive when you read that uh, Freddie is giving Joe these advices, how she can improve. And then Joe actually writes different genres. She tries poetry and children's books and all of that, then she has a creative break. You need that in order to improve yourself. Amy does that as well in the book. Like yeah, she tries yeah. sculpting yeah. and watercolors and oils. And <laughs> like wood, a, wood burning. Yeah, she does it all. That's the way it goes when you're an artist. You try different things yeah. until yeah. you find your own thing. Louisa, she really understood the creative mm. process. Yeah. Because, like nothing, nothing comes to you overnight. I mean, I think a lot of trails of artistry now in our modern culture are just a bit like, oh, well, mm. th this just came to the artist's head and it was oh. fully formed and it was great. And um, it's not true to uh, the, the creative process at all. Yeah. A lot of times these ideas, they they have to develop over a long period mm. of time. You know, she, she was not young when she wrote this book. Yeah, she was 33, I think. She mm -hmm. had been writing quite some time then. She wrote from experience. Cho in part two of Little Woman is Louisa writing and wanting that feedback. And there's that uh, scene in in the book when she's starting to write those stories. She's asking advice from all her family members. She wants mm -hmm. that feedback, but they think she takes all the advice and then the story becomes horrible <laughs> because <laughs> she listens to everything what they are saying. And she just changes and changes, so it fits to all of them. Yeah. But with Friedrich, he basically tells Jo to listen to herself, study different characters, and read Shakespeare and Goethe. He, he does a version of what Joe's dad does. Joe is, uh, Joe's dad is like, hey, just do something that's true to you. Mm. Don't let these people, like, you know change up your novel or cut it up or anything why don't, like don't don't just do it for the yeah. money um, and as first Joe was like oh no I gotta make the money no, 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 no. Yeah. And, but then you know the novel flops I think and then you know Friedrich is the one to kind of expand mm. on what Joe's father was saying and being like we should be creating like, meaningful authentic mm. work not just stuff that brings in money I was reading Chine's book about Louisa and there was this diary marking of Louisa where she I've written that Emerson had given her similar advice that she should write something that pleases herself and not things that please the, please the crowds. So I think mm -hmm. that's something that might have come from there. Then she had also advice from Henry David Thoreau and her publisher and other people who cared about her works. That's something that you can reflect on Little Woman and Joseph Frick's relationship because I'm not a writer, but I would imagine that writers would like to have romantic relationship yeah. with people who actually encourage them to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know, you, you need someone to, to feed that work. And yeah. Friedrich is very cultured, like he knows a lot about literature. He is very earnest with her, and, and, like, and, has, and holds her to high standards. And mm. I think that's another yeah. really important aspect of being a partner, is that you hold the, uh, your partner to higher standards. Mm.